Hey y'all, it's Turban David here. I just wanted to do a little update video since I haven't posted anything of any kind of substance in quite a while. Um, and that's for a lot of different reasons. Uh, I had a lot of different life changes happen in the past year. Um, some great, some not so great. Um, but uh, some of that stuff has led me to some conclusions about life and my thought patterns that basically conflict with certain aspects of ideology that I used to really strongly advocate. Um, and I'll get into that at some point in subsequent videos. Just need to sit down and really organize my thoughts. Um, so yeah, um, what all happened? Well, uh, I spent about mm, a couple years my depressive part of my bipolar cycle getting worse and worse um, and then the pandemic just sort of compounded that uh, but a few months ago I finally got on an antidepressant on top of my mood stabilizer and it's made a world of difference let me tell you holy shit like I always went out of my way to not get on like a massive cocktail of psych meds and I resist getting my dosage increased um, just because I don't want to hit maximum tolerance on a drug on you know with a drug that um, has been working but the thing is like you, you do hit the tolerance and you have to get the dose raised I, I should have had my uh, mood stabilizer raised probably two, three years ago. <laughs> so I got that done, and then uh, I got on Wellbutrin and Clonidine uh, at the end of June this year, and it's completely shifted my attitude and mental health about fucking everything. <laughs> really, like, holy shit. Um, I guess you don't realize in the moment when you're slowly slipping, but now I'm going to be a lot more conscious of it. If I start to have any kind of major depressive symptoms, I'm immediately going to get my meds tweaked because, wow, why didn't I do this sooner? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, so there's that. Um, I moved to a new town, which is infinitely superior to the last one. Um, the last place I lived was a rundown meth head redneck shithole. Um, just no future prospects. Uh, damn near impossible to find anybody like intelligent to talk to. <laughs> Holy shit. Like, I can't believe I stayed there as long as I did. Um, anyway, oh, I got a, a new job with a different company. I, I, I was, I'm on my third company of the year now, and they're by far the best. It's fucking awesome. Um, I'm making $17 an hour, which for my location is like amazing. Oh, I never thought that would happen. <laughs> like, wow. In the grand scheme of things, it's not that much, but like whatever. Considering it's full time, and you know, just a handful of years ago, I never thought that that would remotely be possible. I mean, I went from being completely disabled by mental illness and not being able to fucking do anything to being able to kind of, you know, function a little bit more normally, I guess, um, and not have to rely on the 700 some dollars a month or whatever of SSI like ugh. 
Um, so that's cool. I got a divorce this year. Not so cool. Um, my original plan was to move to Canada, and that just didn't really work out. Um, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I don't know. We're still friends. She's cool. But there were some major incompatibilities. Um, one of which was, uh, um, she's asexual and I'm polyamorous. Now, not, not like slutty, not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's just not my thing personally. But, um, I got involved with somebody and it was like super intense, um, right off the bat. And I immediately thought, okay, like, I need to tell my wife about this, and, you know, because, I mean, like, she had known that I was, you know, talking to this person and involved with this person, but she didn't know that, you know, I felt real serious about it, and, uh, I don't know, I guess I figured that she would move here, and, you know still be my wife, but nope. Um, yes, she was cool with polyamory until she wasn't, which, you know, that's life. Whatever. No hard feelings. It is what it is. Um, she's a cool person. Um, it wasn't like a there wasn't, like, animosity or, or major drama or anything. Um, just sort of had to... I had to split up. It was super depressing. <laughs> I mean, I feel okay about it now, but, like, at the time, it was... It was not okay. And the person that, uh... I got involved with turned out to be a clinical narcissist. And, uh, the relationship was a fucking nightmare. So, that's great. Um, processing a lot of trauma right now. Um, yeah, like I'm in a support group and back in therapy. Like, it was terrible. <laughs> anyway. So... There's a lot of different aspects to a lot of these different things that have happened, uh, particularly in the last, like, two years. Um, processing a lot of that. And I'm still processing a lot of it. Uh, I, st I still identify as a feminist. But I am not sure if I want to identify as a radical feminist anymore, I really am kind of looking at black pill feminism. <laughs> but, I don't know. I'm kind of a doomer, and, and you combine that with, you know, hardcore female separatist lesbian radical feminism. So that's pretty much what you get is black pill feminism. Um, but I'm also kind of not super concerned with the labels right now. Um, sorry, I'm playing with my little ponytail here. It's kind of addictive for some reason. Um, I don't know, yeah. There's just a lot of things. There's certain things in radical feminism where you'll find like a blanket condemnation of. And there's no nuance, but there is a nuance. In reality, there is nuance. Um, and again, that's something I'll get into in a future video. I really have to sit down and organize all of my thoughts and like write something out and have that to go off of. I don't think I will be able to do the topic justice, speaking off the cuff like I am right now. Uh, but one of the things I really want to do also is curate all these playlists that I have on this channel. Um, I mean, I have hundreds of videos in these playlists. 
you know, that I started building years and years ago, I can't say that I necessarily want to present what is in all of them to the public as something that I do advocate or recommend because I don't know what all is in them anymore and I don't want to be um, mistaken for believing in things that I don't or having an attitude that I don't. Um, so I, I don't, I'm thinking about just making them all private until I go through and like go back through. I have to watch all of these fucking videos and like, oh, it's kind of overwhelming. Um, but there's so much good stuff on them that I don't really want to make them private either because it's still a good resource for people. Either way, even if, you know, I, I can't uh, necessarily say that I advocate for everything in all of them anymore because I definitely don't. Um, and I guess a big part of that is just, yeah, developing more nuance about particular things. Uh, got some ideological shifts happening. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I just kind of want to prioritize... What is, what is, what is pragmatic, but also ethical and, um, kind of prioritize kindness, I guess. I mean, I've kind of been slowly coming along around to that for quite a while. Um, but I kind of want to, I'm getting deeper into some esoteric Buddhist stuff and I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily ever going to convert to that but when you get into like the like tantric buddhism especially the japanese forms which i'm particularly fascinated by right now um there's a lot of really good valuable useful stuff that really find improves my mental health um going back to Buddhist forms of meditation that I haven't practiced for like, you know, 15, 20 years. Um, I was a Buddhist from age 13 to 18, like hardcore obsessive, but it was like that crappy Western Buddhism, mostly like Zen with a sprinkling of watered down Western style stuff. Um, I didn't, I was an atheist back then, so I didn't take any of the esoteric stuff seriously. Now I do. Because, wow, like, they have shit down, like, on a lock. They can do some major fucking shit. Um, when you compare it to what, say, a Wiccan can accomplish with magic, there is, there is no comparison. There is no comparison. It just isn't. Um, but... It requires a level of literacy and discipline that you're probably never gonna never gonna see that be typical in the, most of the Western occult community. Um, so anyway, there's that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I've been really reevaluating a lot of things about my own communication style and where a lot of that has come from. Um, you know, and especially like being on an antidepressant now and the clonidine to like chill me out. It's, uh, I don't know, the bipolar irritability and the resentment from all the trauma and society being as fucked up as it is and, you know, just having to survive with multiple disabilities and like I do it on my own you know I'm not living off of anybody else I'm not vampirizing people like I'm I'm out here struggling <laughs> like being as self-sufficient as I can and not asking anybody for anything in the process um which I don't know I guess that's what being an adult is but it's fucking hard hard when you got severe bipolar disorder. Ooh. 
And also, like, the autism spectrum stuff and obsessive-compulsive personality stuff and all of that. <sighs> Complex trauma. That's the big thing I've started really taking a hard look at, um, especially the last couple years. And after this horrible abusive relationship that I was in earlier this year, I have put the brakes on everything. I don't fucking want to get involved with anybody until I sort out all of the things that have made me susceptible to that shit. I've been a narcissist magnet my whole life, and my childhood groomed me into that. So I have to, like, unpack all of these things. And, um, you know, thinking back on how my personality changed as a, a result of having to adapt to an abusive environment at a young age. You know, I naturally, you know, I, when I was a little kid, I mean like grade school, I organized a fight club. It's the leader of the fight club <laughs> at recess. And like, you know, clear, clearly like anger acting out issues, you know, when you, uh, don't have the freedom to express that at home. It comes out somewhere else, you know. Um, but anyway, from the time I was little on up to now, I've always, like, organized groups and been, like, a group leader, but always wanted to be, like, egalitarian about everything and, you know, having anarchist ideals. That's how you go about stuff. You want everything to be consensus democracy and socialism and whatever. But when it comes to something like an activist group, um, some, you know, if you're in a major urban area where you can attract other radical activists who know their shit and know how the process is supposed to work and you don't have to spoon feed them everything, then yeah, you can have workable groups that operate that way. But if you're in an, in an area, you know, like I was, Nobody else knows these politics. Nobody else has read the books. Nobody else has contemplated any, any of this stuff. So you try to bring people up to speed, and they're like, oh, yeah, I like that. That's like That sounds really cool, and I, I agree with that. And you make it clear that you expect everybody to, you know, you be your own leader, and, you know, here's stuff about group facilitation skills. This is how I'm doing this. Um, we need to all rotate leadership and take, take turns and have equal influence. Well, that doesn't work out very well. Um, people don't usually want to put in too much effort and they don't want to step up to the plate more often than not. Um, I'll be, you know, maybe a little bit here and there, you know, but as far as getting like real consistent, you know, passionate, hard work out of people, it's difficult to find that, you know, um, if you're the person with the vision and you're the person organizing the stuff and the only way the group will continue is if you continue putting in 90% of the effort, why not just be like, hey, I'm the leader, hey, I'm the fucking high priestess, whatever, but I hate that, you know, I just naturally like shy away from identifying with, well, I can't say naturally, but I just, I, 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 I don't want to, I don't know, be perceived as like this bossy bitch or whatever. And I, I want people to feel welcome and like their input really matters. And, you know, again, coming out of the anarchist politics and trying to use that communal um, thing, that style, uh, with everything, it doesn't really work out super well, and I found, like, in a coven, and, you know, I, I initially organized a whole bunch of different people from a whole bunch of different paths and levels of experience, and was like, everybody should have an equal say, and we can synthesize something general that works for all of us. Oh my god, what a nightmare. Never again. Now it's, we have a council. The council are, are the people who actually do practice regularly and who do read fucking books. Nobody else gets to make final decisions about stuff. But 
we still don't formally have a leader, although nothing happens unless I initiate it. So I think by default, if I'm being honest, I'm the high priestess, which feels weird for me to say, because I don't really feel um, that advanced. I mean, compared to the people that I admire and whose uh, texts I study and, you know, people that I am, like, heavily inspired by who are, like, ultra, ultra advanced adepts, I'm, like, intermediate. You know, and, uh, you know, a lot of times the mental illness and then, like, personal drama kind of, you know, sometimes practice sort of falls to the wayside. Like, like when I was in that horrible relationship earlier this year, I barely fucking did anything. And I used to do anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours a day, every fucking day. And I scheduled stuff according to the planetary day and hour. Um, and it was in the middle of all these different, like, major ritual cycle projects moved her in with me forget about it that all just like went straight out the fucking window my whole system of living completely fucking disrupted and destroyed um it's just not not a good time generally uh so anyway yeah i guess i'm reconsidering uh aspects of egalitarianism uh, based on these experiences and trauma stuff, you know, not wanting to assert myself because, you know, growing up that, uh, that, that got me beaten and screamed at, you know, um, that gets drilled out of you, you know, and, um, you know, and being like bullied and stuff, you know, whatever, for being gay and gender nonconforming and all of that, um, and, uh, yeah, my sister is super, super narcissistic and very fucking weird and controlling and abusive, like, clear up into my 20s. But at the time, I didn't realize, I didn't have an awareness of, like, cluster B stuff, you know, and how these people operate in relationships and why and, and you know, it's just you're in it and you're in the fog of it your whole fucking life. It's all you know. It's all you know is people pushing you into the background and people talking over you and all this stuff. And it's like the whole time you are filled with fucking rage and resentment for it. It is not who you are. It is not what feels comfortable or natural to you. Um, it is abusive. Um, and it is disrespectful and domineering. And I'm not about that. I am not fucking tolerating that in my life anymore at all. And I know from now on, if I'm going to get involved with somebody romantically, communication, holy shit, working on the communication skills big time because my communication skills have been crap because of these exact issues. Um, and so that just sort of exacerbates problems with the cluster B people that flock to me for supply, um, all the fucking time. Um, so developing better boundaries, it's a big thing. Uh, and again, you know, it's just one of those things that's, uh, it's groomed out of you, it's beaten out of you, you know, whenever you grow up in the environment that I did. Uh, so really reflecting on that stuff is really... been kind of sobering. So I'm like in my 30s and going back to my childhood and sort of sorting out like who would I have been if none of that ever happened? And it's becoming clearer and clearer to me every day. And it's kind of weird. It's like mourning the loss of yourself and years of wasted energy and resources. 
In so many ways, I'm so much further behind in life for prioritizing the wrong people and just not having the assertiveness skills that I otherwise would have had. And I, I did, actually, when I was really, really little. Um, that was just, that was a key component of my personality. So, anyway, I don't know where, where was I going with this? I don't know. I'm considering sort of just deleting all the, the playlists because it would be easier than curating them. Yeah, like, oh, it's, it's a sand mandala, just whatever. But then I'm like, you know, I put all this time and effort. <laughs> but I guess that's kind of the point of the Tibetan sand mandala is impermanence. Just brush it away. But I don't know, I want it, I want it to be a good resource for people. So I am going to put in that time, I think. It's going to take a while, though. I might just, like, make certain things private and then go back to them. Or, and then, you know, eliminate a bunch of stuff and then put them back up. You know, the stuff that's actually... Like, if I have, like, 57 videos about the exact same fucking topic, I could probably narrow that down to whichever ones are the best. And whichever ones don't have stuff in them that I no longer agree with or that, you know conveys a shitty attitude that I don't want to associate myself with. Um, all that kind of crap. So, anyway, uh, yeah, that's it. That's, that's the big update. Um, if you thought any of this was interesting or engaging, feel free to like and subscribe. Um, and comment. I'm not sure what kind of timetable we're looking at as far as me updating beyond this. I do actually have uh, three or four videos already recorded, so maybe more, at least four, three or four. Yeah, anyway, like a couple unboxings and uh, ritual footage. I might put that on the cover in YouTube instead of this one, though. Yeah, I'll probably do that. Anyway, see ya.